G'day guys, it's Calvin, Cartoon Company in New Zealand. Sometimes life is meant to challenge us, and this job has certainly challenged me. Not so much in the, the difficulty of the job, it's just everything else behind the scenes has been a little bit testing. What I've ended up with is a very lovely little link loom, running a link monsoon, and it's off to see Kerry in Canada. Let's go back in time and see where we started. Kerry was the proud owner of this stuff. We had an Emo ECU with a, with a reasonable ECU, but the caps need a bit of a tidy up. We've got an Emo ECU that's got fuel pump issues, fuel pump circuit issues, and a Japanese ECU. Uh, that's a Japanese one, and that's an Emo one. All non-VVTI. And that is his wiring loom. Hmm. That's what I think of that. And that's what I think of those. So pricing all that up, it wasn't going to work cost effectively. There, there was better options. And often, if you've got a really damaged standard wiring loom, an aftermarket ECU makes a whole lot of sense. So I did this for him. One of those. This very gorgeous wiring loom. Everything sorted, really nice. And one of those. But unfortunately, that didn't quite go to plan either. Um, nothing wrong with that setup as far as those ECUs. I like them. They work really well when they work. But this one didn't work. Spitronics had just done an upgrade from the Orion to the Orion 2. And I got some of the very, very first ECUs. And unfortunately, there was this little issue with them with the idle speed control output for the control box. Uh, Spitronics are sorting it out. I was able to test it and check it. It's okay, a good learning process. And, but there's a time factor to get it all sorted. This one starts and runs the engine beautifully, bang. Runs, revs, does everything right. We've even gone to the point of my tune has gone over to South Africa and run an engine in South Africa and it did everything right. Showing it's not a settings problem. This doesn't help Kerry get his engine going though. He's in Canada, wants his vehicle up and running. Time factor of that, it's gonna be two or three months with the present situation to get everything sorted and freighted here and, and underway. And I will do, I will be using more of those because I really like them. So, another solution is required. So we went for, so we went for the next option, and I bought another wiring loom with one of them. So I sat down, and I, I I've done this in the past, and this one was a left-hand drive vehicle. Yeah, so the e ECU is going to be mounted on the right-hand side of the, the vehicle. Standard ignition, and we wanted to keep it pretty simple. But at the same time, I'm not going to drop my quality, so it's finished with Tefsel wire. With Tefsel wire, and it's covered in rake in, so it's going to be pretty hardy. I believe it's going into a Land Cruiser, and it's a little bit longer than the normal setup. It's going onto a UCF20, but it's got all the features and this loom would go on a UCF20 engine or a Gen 2 engine or a Gen 1 engine, just fine. Relays and fuses, all part of the package. I'm gonna get this loom fitted on that engine. I need to set up the ECU, power it all up, configure it, put a tune in it, get the engine ready to run. Once we've done all that, we'll come back to you and we'll show you a bit more about the loom and just double check it's running like it should. So this one is a little bit longer than normal. 
It's around, look, it's a R speed. About 1.5 from the ECU to the back tapper cover. So this is the right hand tapper cover. Got a branch coming off the kids down the fuel rails. Now it can go uh, on the inside of the fuel rail, like that. Um, it can go on the outside of the fuel rails. It can be tucked down, attached to the fuel rail here like this, zip tied there, or tucked down the bottom like so. It comes up pretty much as self-explanatory. The injectors go like so. Now I have made it long enough, if you're doing diagnosing, to be able to put the injectors in the wrong places. Please don't, when you're just working on it normally. It'll still run fine, but it's just not ideal. If you've got a plug for this coil on this side, and I've made it nice and long, so I can plug in easily. So, and the extra tucks in behind. It uses the factory water temp sensor for a UCF20. I'll show you the uh, dash plug soon. But that is one of the ones that we've got, and we've got a water temp EFI water temp sensor tucks down in there. So this one is running standard coils and standard leads. There's an air temp sensor which will go around here somewhere or tuck in the back of the throttle body like I do on my ones and of course we've got the TPS which goes up to here. The igniter is there. So it can go on in a guard, up on a firewall. It does need an aluminium plate, heat sink, heat sink to go onto. Well, on the back we've got Two earths, these are very important. There and there. They can go both to the same side, but preferably into different holes. Go different sides, just as long as they're earthed nicely to the back of that block, or the back of the cylinder heads. That's the earth, nice and firm. We have a wire, we have a three pin plug at the back here. And in this case, we've only got the one wire attached, which is the starter trigger. But if you want to add a knock sensor to it, a single knock sensor, there are two wires, a signal and, an, and a ground. So they will allow a single knock sensor to be added under the valley. We're going to plug it in. So this one would normally be under the valley and fitted prior to the, the intake being put on. So there's another wire coming off the back with a three pin plug. That is for, on this case, it is for fuel pressure. So I can take a fuel pressure sensor somewhere in the rail or on the intake there if you want to upgrade and put that on. Just a normal three pin transducer, five volt transducer, is perfect for that job. If it's not being used, we're just gonna coil it up nicely and tie it at the back.
Ideally, the loom would be secured in this area here. And again, on this side, tucks along. I'm just going to tuck it down beside the injectors, injector rail in this case. Normally, I'd actually zip tie it or put it behind it. I actually like, like it going behind the rail. So coming down this side, I've got a spare little blue plug here on this one. And that is for the factory purge solenoid, if it's being used, or for the, for the breather, for the fuel tank. If we're not using it, we're just going to tuck it down in the engine there. We've got this extra little plug coming here, which is for the idle speed control. So it's getting an aftermarket idle speed control. I will sometimes give the intake manifold just a little bit of a uh, clearance when I'm fitting up these units. Coming around the front, it will clip into the factory clip right here. Right there, like that. Cam sensor and a couple of zip ties to hold the cam sensor wiring. These two plugs head down the back here. One is the crank angle sensor. We've got the coil plug, of course, and the factory noise suppressor plug. And we keep that because it gives less chance of electrical interference for the crank sensor. And that's the loom fitted. Look at that. Down the side, there's the six pin plug. We're going to plug in this wire here. It's only got one wire in it, and that's for the oil pressure. Now we do have the ability in this particular loom to upgrade if you want to an oil pressure sensor, oil temperature sensor as well that runs back to the ECU giving proper oil pressure readings at the ECU which I recommend but it's not strictly necessary just swap out another loom, change the sensor, away we go Throttle body is fitted, look at that. I've got the bucket of noise. And on this one, because it's UCF20, I've used the front port for the vacuum source. The back port is going to the fuel pressure rig. You can tee into this line just fine, no problems there. Now this, Barb, I prefer it plumbed into the throttle body. I like old yellow. Here it is there. And the air temp sensor, I like it put into the back of the throttle body. But as long as it's in the intake, we're just fine. In this area, there's these plugs here, which are for the dash. And it's got a water temperature. It's got an oil pressure. There's actually a, a power and an earth in there. There's a taco, high level taco off the one of the coil negatives. 
There's also some from the ECU, which can, can be figured to check lights and all those sorts of things. Uh, oil pressure as well, a warning light or a taco from there. And there's one extra white wire here, which is if you were running air conditioning, this comes down by the oil filter housing. There's a white wire down there. Listed as AC, but it could be, that could be good, could be accessory if you wanted. So we plug the ECU in. Those ones wire the dash. There's a can plug. You'll notice no auction sensors. Now I don't put any auction sensors on because there's a much better option of a can lambda link product and it will just plug in to that EC, ECU plug there, that four pin. Uh, you could put a joiner in and run both the OBD2 and the can lambda. Configure it correctly and you get proper wideband input to it. So that's my preference. So I don't worry about normal O2 sensors. And then we have relays and fuses. Really easy. They, they, they plug in right there. Done. Battery power to that one. Done. Then it needs a, there's a fan relay on the end here. We've got an EFI, ECU relay, an ignition relay, a starter motor relay, a fuel pump relay, and a fan relay. The output's here, fan right on the end, fuel pump the next one in. And we've got ignition in, which is this one, and a start crank is this one. As you can see, super, super easy to fit up. I'm just gonna bang a tune into it, check it, and we'll have it running in just a few moments. So I've got this loom set up on the bench now. I've actually been playing with the OBD2, so watch with another video on that. It's working. I've done the video on the upgrade to oil pressure, oil temp sensor if required. There's another video on that. Really, really simple to connect up this setup. Remember to connect the vacuum line. I've got my laptop attached. Easy. One of the things you need to do when you first connect the laptop, very, very important, is calibrate the TPS and to calibrate the map sensor. I've already done the map sensor here and it worked fine, but it just confirms that you've connected everything right and then calibrate the TPS. This one, I've also got the idle switch set up. So it pays to check that the idle switch is working like it should. Then, we power it up, we start the engine. It is that easy. I put, oh, there's a zip tie poking up. I've put the, the fan output there. Fuel pump output is there, that's off to the bucket of noise. Then it's ignition in. And then we get the brum brum one, this one, the start. So this goes off. It goes off to the key on, and this goes off to the key for start, and we push that button there. We're done it's that easy now the setup comes with um, the vacuum line comes with the little connector that goes to the starter motor comes with the connector that goes to whatever option of um, oil pressure you want this one the Kiri just a simple oil pressure light for the dash nice and simple but it's really easy for later on if you wanted to upgrade and put it through the ECU and then have the ECU control the oil light, that can be programmed. And you'll notice in here, the zip tie to the, the little outlets is the other side of these plugs. So if you need them, they're there. Main power input, there's the other side of it. 
just making it nice and easy for guys to have all the right bits when they get their setup. 65 millimeter grommet for through the firewall, nice and easy. Boosted engines. Uh, myself, I prefer not to run boosted engines on the likes of a Monsoon or an Atom. I feel you need knock control as a safety. They'll still run them fine, it's just, it's one of my preferences. This setup can have a single knock sensor put in into that underneath the valley as an upgrade. And they can be put in and set up as well and then tuned to suit. New two wire idle speed control unit comes with this setup. The reason I go with the two wire idle speed units is it only takes up one output from the ECU, keeps it nice and simple. And this is a basic ECU, but I'm trying to do as much as I can with it for something whilst keeping it simple, keeping it easy, and making sure it runs the engine as good as we could. There are lots of guys that don't run idle speed control, and it, they just don't run as nice. It's nice to have that kick in the morning where it idles up like it should, having that control and maintaining proper idle. When you turn the fans on, can bring the idle up, do everything. It's what injection's all about and something that we really work hard to get as good as we can. That's why idle speed is, is an absolute must for when I'm doing these sort of setups. This particular loop can run both a monsoon and an atom. With the atom, there's reduced features. With the monsoon, of course, you get those few couple of extra features. And I can run almost the same setup. I would lose um, two of my outputs. And I've got those outputs as spares anyway. Well, at the moment, one of them is a check light, but the two ignitions wouldn't be outputs. They would become ignitions to run coils. So I can run a very similar setup to this with coil on plugs, still running with a monsoon, semi-sequential injection, really nice and tidy. Of course, I can do it left and right-hand drive vehicles. Standard length from the back of the engine to the ECU is normally 1.2 meters, which I think in Bald Eagles is four feet. Yeah, four feet. Yeah, 1,200. Three, 300's a foot four feet. Standard length for a UZ loom is around about one meter. It comes with some pinouts and a little bit of instruction and a bit of a diagram here and it comes with a reasonable base map that has been test fired in the workshop. So all of my wiring looms get run up in the workshop so I know it works and I know it's doing what it should. This map is designed to get it started and running, and then be taken to a tuner to be tuned correctly, or to start the road tuning process if you're competent in doing that. If you're doing road tuning, I recommend putting in a wide band sensor. And the plug is there, it just needs to be plugged in. Um, on this one, the recommended unit is the Link Can Lambda. So I'm happy this one's up and running, it's all done. It's ready for me to pop off the engine, slam it in a box, and get it over to Canada. Hope that's been helpful. Talk to you again soon. Catch you later. Kerry, uh, this is this is your loom here. It's ECU. you. These dash plugs, the ECU plug, relays and fuses plug, and I'm going to throw on that dongle. Come along. There's our grommet. That grommet. Yep. Oh wait. There's the ECU. We come along. We go past the idle speed control unit that's coming with it with the extra. Barb, we come along, and there's a branch to the igniter. Make sure you mount it on a piece of aluminium, and there's some heat transfer compound in the bag. 
Is the vacuum hose going along with it? We're good, okay. Come to the back of the engine. Single wire going to the starter motor. So pop the intake off, pop that in. No knock sensors fitted, that, that's an upgrade. If you wanted to even do that, that's in that plug there. What do we got in here? We got, got a branch. Goes down and we've got injector plugs. And they are numbered. Okay. Down. Air temp sensors on it. And DPS factory water temp coil plug. We're good. We'll come back here. We're going down this branch. This is for oil pressure. Ugh, oil pressure. This is for fuel pressure. If you ever use fuel pressure, that's that one. If I was doing an atom, that would then become a map sensor. That's why that is in there. A little bit of thinking on my behalf. Oh, there's an earth. There should be two earths, actually. There's the other earth. We come along this branch. We're going past the, the relays and fuses and my sock. Uh, that one's going to get battery power. It's pretty simple. We'll come back to that. But let's go over here. Uh, down here. More injectors. More injectors. Um, this one's for purge solenoid. If you're running it, if you're not running it, just tuck it in the engine. Uh, what's that one? That's the idle speed control unit. That was. That's, that's for that thing. Oh, there's a cam angle sensor. There's the coil plug. Factory noise suppressor. And we come down here. There's your crank sensor. And then in this plug, for this one, we're just running. Standard oil pressure switch. If you ever want to run oil pressure into your ECU, that's the one we use. Relays and fuses. You don't even need to care about this wire, that plug there. Just plug it in. Okay, plug it in to, to that plug there. It was past my leg. And permanent battery powder, that one. Permanently, preferably through a fuse. And fan output, fuel pump output, ignition in. And I listed on here, look, ignition in, start, that's your start input, bang, slam it in, vroom vroom, make it go. But you actually do need to put a fuel pump on that one, you put it out to a, a fuel pump. So that's everything. Okay, um, G4X software. There's the spare dash plugs. We're all good to go. The tune is good enough to start run the engine, maybe lightly drive it. Uh, if you ever put a wide band in, like a can lambda, it can plug into that one. It's just a standard can plug, so we're good there. And that works on, I use the Torque app. There's a free Torque app as well if you want, but I've, I've got the paid for one. So that's what you're getting. Oh, mounting bracket. It's actually clipped on the ECU. And I think that's everything we need from there. Enjoy.